Hi everyone, Grant K here from the Smoke Learning Channel. A workflow quite common with CGI compositing is using render passes. In this video, we're going to be creating a Z depth render pass that can be used in Autodesk Smoke. The purpose of the Z depth render pass is to be able to add depth of field to the composites at the compositing stage, which gives you the ultimate flexibility. For my 3D application, I have chosen Autodesk Maya 2012 and the Mental Ray rendering engine. Here we have a simple scene that represents a CG animation that either you or your CG artists have prepared. In order to get the render passes out of Maya, you would prepare your settings for the render. This could include render layers and assigning various parts of your scene to be rendered. Now to set up the render, we need to go into the render settings window. The first thing to ensure is that we are using the mental ray renderer. Now there are a series of tabs and we will start off in the common tab. One small thing I would like to point out is that if I scroll to the bottom of the window, we will find a setting called depth channel. Ensure that this is unchecked as it will not render the Z depth pass we require. While we're here, we can also set up the render resolution for the frames. I am using 720p HD for this example. Scrolling back to the top of the common tab, we will select the image format. In order to get the most image information across to Autodesk Smoke, we will use the open EXR format. This is considered to be the high dynamic range format for moving pictures. You'll notice that there is also a bit depth error at the bottom of the screen. We'll fix this shortly. The last important detail in the common tab is the file naming. Maya is defaulted to creating a multi-channel EXR with everything embedded into one file. Now this can certainly be handy in certain circumstances, but most situations, people prefer separate render passes for a variety of production pipeline reasons. There is no option in the interface to tell Maya to make separate render passes per channel. However, the way to do it is to right click on the naming box and in the pop-up menu, select insert pass name. When this token is added to the file naming, Maya will automatically split out the render passes into separate files. Now let's set up the quality and bit depth for the render. We'll switch to the quality tab. You can use one of the production presets and tweak them to your liking. Scrolling to the bottom of the window, we'll find the frame buffer option. Inside this menu, we can set the bit depth for the open EXR file. At this moment, the data type is set to 8 bits per channel. In the pull down menu, we will set the bit depth to 16 bits per channel. This is more than adequate for most needs. And finally, we can now define our render passes. Switch to the passes tab in the render settings window. For the purposes of this example, we are only going to create a beauty pass and a Z depth pass. However, you could create as many passes at the same time, depending on your requirements. The first step is to add a render pass to the scene. Click create new render pass and the window will appear. In the list, select camera depth. Click create and close. The render pass now needs to be associated with the render layer. Click the button to associate the render pass with the render layer and the render pass moves to the associated passes window. Now that is almost it. Let's do a test render to review the render pass. Open the render view window using the button at the top of the interface. In the window, we'll click the render menu and choose to render the camera output. Mental Ray begins to render the current frame and the first thing we see is the beauty pass. 
To see the Z-Depth Pass, click the File menu, Load Render Pass, and choose Depth. On the Mac, this brings up a new window to display the Z-Depth channel. This might vary using Maya on a Windows box. Now looking at the Depth channel, it appears as a solid white alpha channel. However, if we decrease the exposure, it will reveal the Depth channel and the gradients. If we were to use it in its current state in Autodesk Smoke, we would also have to decrease the exposure to correctly map the luminance values for the depth of field tools to work accurately in Smoke. It's advisable to get the render pass settings correct to avoid problems when compositing. Back in Maya, we will double click on the depth pass to bring up its settings. In the attribute editor, enable remap depth values. Now, depending on the size of your scene and how it is set up, you will need to set up the camera clipping plane in order to get the correct Z depth setting. We'll set the far clipping plane to 15. Once again, we'll re-render the frame and once the render is complete, we will go ahead and look at the Z depth channel. Now that is what we should get without adjusting any values. We can now bring this into Smoke and apply the effect. Here on the Smoke desktop, we have the OpenEXR render passes which were dragged into the application through the wiretap gateway. To make use of the Z-Depth pass, we will go to the Flame Effects menu and choose the Depth of Field module. We will set the module to load a front and Z-Depth render pass. In the Depth of Field module, we'll increase the Depthogram view to 100 to view the Z-Depth pass values. I'll exaggerate the depth blur to demonstrate this example. When we adjust the focal plane, we can choose what we would like to be in focus. We can also narrow the focal plane and this creates a much tighter focal point. There are multiple controls to adjust all various settings in the depth of field module. The flexibility and time-saving aspect of such a tool is so powerful and you can keep things in focus. Please remember that your render results may vary depending on which 3D application and which rendering engine you use. For more information about Autodesk Smoke or to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash Smoke for Mac. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again real soon.